Hey guys, it's the holiday season and you know what that means. Today we're doing pumpkin sp- <laughs> I'm totally kidding, we're not doing that shit. This is cocoa butter. We don't do pumpkin spice anything. Yeah, so that was a joke. We're not doing pumpkin spice. If anything, we would do sweet potato spice. That's not a thing. Black people, we should invent that. What's going on, guys? I'm Seth Brundle. You are tuned in to Season with Seth. And today, our mystery ingredient, because it is the holiday season, is box stuffing. This dry, Karen-esque breading thing that they sell in boxes. It's universal. Even though we eat dressing, this is a starter for our recipes, but we're gonna be doing this three different ways. We're gonna do a turkey quarter on blue, we're gonna do lobster scampi, and then we're gonna finish this thing off with some savory bread pudding. There's gonna be sausage and fennel and a lot of good flavors, so you wanna stick around. Stay tuned right here, right now. Alrighty, so we're gonna get started on our turkey cordon bleu. The first thing that we need is a nice sized turkey breast, or as it is commonly and properly termed, a turkey titty. We're gonna take this turkey titty and we're gonna place it on our cutting board. So we're gonna take our palm and place it on the turkey breast, and we're gonna take our knife in the center here, and we're just gonna firmly press and cut this in half horizontally. So we just wanna open this up just like this. I am going to put this back in the bowl and go and grab some plastic wrap. So it's got one sheet here. I'm just gonna spread out. And of course, this stuff starts bunching. Don't worry, just fan it back out, it's fine. So we're gonna fan that back out. And then we're gonna take our turkey breast, place it on the plastic wrap. Then we're gonna take a second sheet and place that right over. And I took a little trip to Asgard, so I got Thor's hammer. He said it was cool, just as long as I didn't share it with Loki, everything would be completely fine. So we're gonna take this Thor's meat tenderizer and we're just gonna flatten this turkey breast until it's about half its size, at least. I mean, really put your back into it. Like, you got a lot of frustration. You're tired of being in the house. You don't have a problem with wearing your mask. You're not one of those dumb people who are just sitting around complaining about it. Just take that aggression out. Concede, concede. I think our turkey breast has conceded. Just one more for good measure. So we're just gonna take this plastic wrap off, take some culture salt here, season on one side, some freshly cracked black pepper, some herb de Provence. We're gonna add some smoked paprika. I'm gonna take this thing, flip it over, and season the other side. So for each side, we wanna use about a teaspoon, tablespoon amount Use your own discretion. Let your ancestors speak to you when it comes to the seasoning. Same thing goes with the pepper. Definitely a teaspoon of this, not too much. And then a teaspoon of our smoked paprika. And then finally, again, we have our herb de Provence. All right, we're moving on to step two. Our turkey titty has had its mammogram. It's nice and flat. We're gonna get to the stuffing. This is one of my favorite aspects of this dish. So let's start off with our Swiss cheese here. So the next thing we wanna do is take our prosciutto, our thinly sliced ham. We're gonna do the same thing. We have a little more so we can be a little more liberal with it. Shout out to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. A little more liberal. Get it, dad joke. I'm full of them, I'll be here all day, guys. So we're gonna take this and layer this inside of our turkey breast next. We got two left, so I'm just gonna place this one right here. All right, and again, guys, we've got my favorite cheese here. This is gorgonzola or blue cheese. It's essentially the same thing. Don't get hung up on the names. We have some crumbles here, so I'm just gonna take my spoon and make sure that we have an even and generous layer of this all throughout our turkey breast gonna spoon this on the inside. Let's spread it out a bit, because again, we want this flavor in every single bite. So that's done. So we're gonna take the edge of our plastic wrap and we're gonna start rolling this thing up as tightly as we possibly can. Now we have a nice, tightly rolled turkey titty. And then finally, our last step we wanna do for this one is we wanna find the edge of our turkey breast and we wanna to start to secure it with our toothpicks. So 
So our last and final step before our turkey breast goes in the oven is we have a little dredging station here. We have some AP flour, we have a nice egg wash, it's just a little water, eggs beaten really hard, and then we've taken Karen's stuffing mix and then we processed it and made it really fine, so we have a breading here. We definitely want to take some canola oil or olive oil or whatever neutral oil you have at home and pour this in the stuffing mixture and we wanna to toss it. So what this is going to do is prevent our stuffing mix or our breading for our turkey cordon bleu from burning while it's in the oven. Again, we want all the flavor, we want all the techniques, we want a nice crisp, but we don't wanna burn. So you wanna make sure that you take a fork or a whisk or whatever you have at home and make sure that that canola oil or olive oil or grapeseed oil or whatever neutral oil you're opting for is fully incorporated in this stuffing mix so that it won't burn. We not usher, we not gonna let it burn. So now that that is done, we are going to start with our dredging station. So the first thing that we're gonna do is spread out our AP flour a little bit and we wanna take this nice big double D turkey titty and we are going to dredge it in flour first. So you wanna get every nook and cranny. We're gonna make it work as best as we can. So we're gonna dredge this in AP flour first. That's station one. So then we're gonna move over to station two, dredge it in our egg wash. Again, getting every nook and cranny. And then last step, we want to get all of this breading on it. We have our coated turkey breast here. You're going to want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees, and you're gonna to want to roast this for anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes, just depending on the intensity of your oven. If your landlords are trifling like mine and your oven is pretty weak, you're probably gonna to want to go for the 40 minute mark. Let's do that right now. All of these recipes are my babies, and I can't necessarily say that I have a favorite, but this is my favorite. It is uh, my favorite recipe, number one, because it's super easy to make. And number two, it's a really luxurious dish that doesn't take a long time to cook. So we're gonna get started on that. We're making lobster scampi. So the first step for this dish that we wanna do is we're gonna take some room temperature butter. We've let it come to room. We've let it come to room temperature. We're just gonna dump that in a mixing bowl so it's nice and pliable, you see that? Doesn't take much uh, mashing or much elbow grease at all. So the next step to this is we're gonna take some kosher salt, sprinkle that in. Then we're gonna take some freshly grated garlic cloves. We're gonna add that. And then we're gonna add some red pepper flakes. Depending on how spicy you like yours, you can do a teaspoon or two tablespoons. And then we're gonna add some black pepper, freshly cracked, of course. And then we're gonna use two types of lemon. Was that the Gucci man? Uh, I don't know, I'm sorry, guys. So we're gonna put a little bit of lemon juice in here, and then we're gonna use some lemon zest. So then we're gonna also add, finally, some freshly chopped Italian parsley. And that is the makeup of our scampi flavoring. So we're gonna take our spatula. We're just gonna give this a nice mix and fold to make sure that it's evenly incorporated. Our compound butter for our scampi is done. Moving on to our next step, we're gonna take our lobster tail. So I know people tend to be intimidated by lobster. I know my friend Andy, who's behind the camera right now, is a little intimidated. So I'm gonna teach you something, Andy and all of you guys at home. Don't let the lobster punk you, you punk the lobster. This is dead, it's dead for a reason. So I'm gonna take this lobster tail, tail side facing me, chef's knife in hand. I'm gonna put the point of my chef's knife on my cutting board, hold this tail with my middle finger and my thumb, and I'm just gonna apply some elbow grease and get a nice, clean, even cut. Was that so scary, Andy? All right, it is time to scampi this lobster. So we're just gonna first take these tails and we're gonna arrange them in our dish like this, you see? So the next thing we're gonna do is take this compound scampi butter. I'm just gonna take maybe a tablespoon worth and I'm just gonna spread this. 
So we're gonna take our stuffing breadcrumb mixture that we have here, and we're just gonna take this and sprinkle it on our lobster. This time around, you don't have to toss this in any neutral oil. We should have preheated our ovens to 425, so we're gonna take this beautiful baking dish here and pop that in there for a few minutes. When we come back, we'll have some scampi or another dish. <laughs> All right, so I know you've had bread pudding before, but you have not had my savory bread pudding with some amazing ground pork sausage. We're gonna get started on that right now. So we've got our pan over medium heat. We have some beautiful pork sausage with a good amount of fat that we've uh, taken out of the casing. So we're just gonna line our pan with some nice olive oil here. Just a little bit, because we got a lot of fat from the pork sausage, like I mentioned. We're gonna add our pork sausage to our pan that's sliding all over our nonstick. All right, so our sausage is browned and pretty much cooked through, so we're just gonna add some aromatics to this thing. We've got some diced fennel here. Next, we're gonna add some chopped king oyster mushrooms to the mixture. And then finally, we're gonna add some chopped scallions. And we're just gonna continue letting this cook off until our fennel is a little translucent and our king oyster mushrooms have just cooked down just a bit. All right, so our fennel is cooked down. It's nice and translucent like Larry Bird's skin. Our kitchen is nice and fragrant. So this is done. I'm gonna turn our heat off and then we're gonna get started on step two of our savory bread pudding. Now we're gonna move on to the pudding part of the savory bread pudding. So the first step is we're gonna add heavy cream to our mixing bowl. I'll follow that up with a few eggs. Then we're gonna move on to some nice creamy fontina cheese. We're gonna add that to our mixing bowl, as well as some salty cheese. We're gonna add some Parmesan, some freshly grated Parmesan, some garlic powder, some black pepper, and finally, my favorite, some culture salt. And then we're gonna grab our whisk. Also got this from Asgard. We're just gonna whisk to combine. So we've got some day-old ciabatta bread that we've just chopped up very roughly. No finesse needed for this part, but day-old bread is best. The drier, the better. It soaks up all that pudding part. And to our ciabatta, we're gonna add Karen's stuffing mixture. It's uh, nice and dry and rough around the edges. Thanks, Karen, for this. We've got all three of our components here. We've got our savory, we've got our bread, and we've got our pudding. Now we just gotta combine them all. They're gonna make love and the dish is gonna be a bread pudding baby. So let's do it. So the first thing we wanna do, give this another little good whisk. We're gonna pour pudding mixture in here and I'm just gonna do a bit at a time just to make sure I don't overcrowd my bowl. Then we're gonna add our savory pork sausage with our fennel and our scallions and our king oyster mushrooms. And then I'm gonna take my rubber spatula and just fold everything so everything is evenly incorporated. We always want everything to be equal, opportunity for all foods. All right, so a bit more and we'll be all done. We're gonna transfer our bread pudding mixture that hasn't been baked off yet to a baking dish. We have a nice small cast iron here that I've already sprayed with cooking spray. So we're just gonna go ahead and fill this to the very tippy top. This already smells good. I think it's the pork sausage. I mean, y'all can use turkey sausage if you want, if you're into that type of thing. Pork is king, y'all. So we preheated our oven to 375 and we're gonna pop this in there for anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes. You remember my rule, if you have trifling landlords, bit on the higher side, the 40 minute side, but we should be able to do 30 minutes here. So I'm just gonna do that. <laughs> Alrighty, fresh out of the oven, fresh off the presses. We have all three dishes laid out here for you guys. It just needs a little garnishing. I have some chives here that I just rough chopped. So I'm just gonna add these to our lobster tails. Then we're gonna move over to our stuffed turkey cordon bleu. We've got a little bit of bechamel here. So I'm just gonna drizzle this all over the center. Okay, and then we're gonna finish that off with some chopped chives. Last but not least, we've got some extra grated Parmesan here. And of course, we've got some chopped parsley here. Gotta make it pretty. And there we have it, box stuffing three ways. We've got turkey cordon bleu, we have our lobster scampi tails, and then we have our savory pork sausage bread pudding. All three for the price of one.
So these are my holiday meals. They're the perfect portions for having a quarantine gathering with just you and maybe one other person that you've been quarantining with for the last nine months. Please guys be safe. These are perfect portions. Happy holidays, happy Kwanzaa, happy Christmas, Merry Christmas, Hanukkah. I think I got everything. So try all these out. You know, if you love them, if you hate them, hit me up on Instagram, give me some feedback. Until next time, peace out.